coming at short notice, uh, we decided to call this conference uh, um, uh, because of uh, a few things that have happened. Uh, one of the things was a letter written to the mayor, myself, and a letter written to the town clerk. So most of you were calling, asking the same question. So we thought that it would then be prudent that we answer at once. Uh, indeed, a letter was written to us. Uh, unfortunately, such is intra-government intra communication or inter-government communication these days that uh, a letter sometimes uh, comes to you uh, before it reaches you. <laughs> In other words, uh, uh, it's either it's a result of transparency or uh, secrecy is no longer a, a valued community within uh, our circles. But be that as it may, uh, we run public institutions and uh, those uh, institutions must always be accountable. And uh, any letters written to the mayor, to the town clerk, uh, by the minister and the permanent secretary, as the case may be, are letters of public record and, and have to be dealt with. So traditionally, once we receive a letter from uh, the, the ministry, we, we read it out to a full council. Uh, we, when we read it out to a full council, we then respond uh, to the issues that are raised in the letter. So today I thought that uh, it, it is important that uh, we, we, we speak to some of those issues and the steps that we are going to take in terms of uh, dealing with the issues raised, some that we have already raised. Uh, we are in the middle of a budgetary process. As you know, in terms of our enabling act, uh, our budget must uh, be approved uh, by the ministry for it to become effective. And you know we have raised this issue a number of times that uh, it creates an inherent uh, difficulty in the sense that uh, you have to send uh, the budget elsewhere for its approval even after you've done your full council. But uh, such is the nature of the tired government that we have. Uh, There's the first tire, second tire, and the third tire. And uh, we occupy the third tire. So some of our things have to be approved by uh, a central, uh, central government. Uh, the merits of that might be a discussion for another day, but that is uh, uh, the case as of now. And in those, uh, we, we obviously need the budget. Uh, ours is a creature of statute for us to levy new fees, carry out new projects, do new things. We need to have uh, a, a new budget and to levy and to set out the outline of the following year. So the number of issues have been raised. So as a way of process, we are having a meeting with the minister. Uh, he is coming to these chambers on, uh, is it on Wednesday? On Wednesday, uh, this week, uh, the minister is coming to explain and to further uh, elucidate uh, some of the things that are contained in his memo. Uh, and uh, we have notified council and senior management so some of the things will be discussed at the meeting that we are going to hold with the minister should, uh, 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 should it remain on the calendar on Wednesday uh, uh, um, uh, this week. On Thursday, just before the Easter holidays, we had a scheduled council meeting. Uh, that is a full council meeting. And we are going to hold the full council meeting to discuss other council business, but in addition to the business, we are going to be discussing the issues that have been raised uh, uh, by this memo and issues relating to the budget approval 
uh, processes. A number of issues have been raised uh, by the minister, which we have already shared and we have set on councils uh, dealing with the very same issues. So the first point being the issue of the ERP, the Enterprise Resource Package uh, for council. As you know, we have held a number of meetings in the last council and the current council to deal with the Enterprise Resource Package. Uh, as you know, the Parliamentary Committee recommended that we reinstate uh, the previous um, uh, 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 ERP in order to pursue uh, an accounting hole that had happened around 200 million uh, 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 US dollars and also to enable us to complete effectively the audits at that time. We also got the same recommendation from the Auditor General. Uh, council itself, in the previous council, we held a number of meetings where we recommended that we reinstate the previous uh, ERP in the meantime, and should there be need to look for a new one, we continue with the process while we still have that ERP. For one reason or the other, uh, and I raised it, uh, we held a meeting uh, the, last, the latest special council meeting was on ERP and Chenesa Harare. And we raised our concern that uh, there seems to be a, a connivance between some of the officials within this council and officials at PRAS to firstly uh, avoid us reinstating the ERP that was there. And it is for obvious reasons, because this ERP that was there will enable us to reconstitute the accounts and will be able to make us see the missing gaps. And then secondly, to get a new ERP. At one point, you recorded there were attempts last year to foist by PRAS and, 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 and our own council uh, procurement uh, a, a contract that was costing a princely sum of 52 million US dollars. And uh, we had to intervene and stop that ERP. Well, where is the obvious route is for us to reinstate the previous ERP as for the parliamentary and auditor general reports. And we've been let down by PRAS and our own staff. As today, this afternoon, we are going to be meeting. In fact, I was supposed to be at a meeting with PRAS at 2 p.m. Uh, I've asked them to reschedule it for about 2.30. And I'm going to go there so that we can discuss the issues of the ERP and uh, 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 the merry-go-round that they have put us through in relation to the ERP, uh, leading to where we are now, where the budget cannot be approved. But we made our applications in time. The Technical Committee of Council set in time, gave recommendations to PRAS, and they've been uh, declined for one reason or the other. Even our request for a bridging ERP to say we cannot move without reinstating the previous ERP for us to bridge the gap. All those efforts have been declined. Surprisingly, the one that was costing 52 million was swimming to, to, to being appointed. So we, we, we really uh, uh, share the issues and we have held uh, council meetings to deal with those, those issues a number of times. The other issue is the issue of audited accounts. Again, a council, these have been affected by the ERP situation. Uh, the removal of the ERP at some point uh, created this lacuna in the audited accounts of the city of Harare. We've held a number of meetings, that is council meetings which will chronicle uh, which you have reported on, to deal with the lack of the audited accounts starting from 2019 when we unceremoniously removed our uh, uh, ERP service provider. And, 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 and since then, we have not been able to, to, to comply with this mandatory uh, requirement. And this is not out of trying. The previous council, before the elections, insisted and made a number of resolutions to, to, re, to, to, to around the issues of the audits, to reinstate the, the ERP, to the extent that the number of tests that are occurring 
within the system. Uh, we now have over 23 uh, staff in the finance department on suspension pending disciplinary hearings because of the cap that has been created by, among other things, the lack of an ERP system, the lack of audited accounts, uh, 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 and also the ones that, um, that, uh, that have been produced to date uh, had some serious uh, qualifications that needed to be attended to. So we, we, we are really uh, concerned about that and uh, we, we have passed the resolutions that are necessary to deal with that and we are going to uh, elaborate in our response to the ministry and the steps that we are taking uh, to deal and counter uh, this anomaly. But we, 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 we are dealing with the anomaly in a, in a simple manner. We have recommended as a council in the previous council that we want to comply with the Auditor General's report and the Parliamentary uh, Committee report. But elements within our staff and elements within PRAS are refusing uh, or declining to allow us to be able to do uh, 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 this uh, meaningful work that will then deal with these, these <coughs> issues. Other issues that has been raised is the issue of debtors. I mean, uh, uh, debtors to council are uh, a uh, 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 source of concern. Uh, ironically, uh, uh, government is one of our biggest debtors, uh, and, and we welcome uh, that uh, the minister is concerned uh, over this issue. Uh, industry, uh, commerce, uh, residential, uh, as you are aware, uh, councils remain the very few services uh, in this country that are operating on a post-paid basis. So in other words, we give you the service first and then you pay for it. So we are caught in a chicken and egg time warp. Uh, right now, even Zinara, to get onto the highways, <clears throat> you pay. To get out of the highway, you pay. Ironically, uh, you pay getting out of the highway and getting into the highway, but you don't pay getting into the council roads. Um, so we are still the service provider that gives you a service and then you pay later. And that has created a problem. Even now, <clears throat> telephones, data, you pay first and then you get your what? Your data. So the issue of debt, we, we, we need it to be dealt with and we will have a, a plan to deal with. Issues around estate funds, um, we have indeed shared the same concern around estate funds. The, the biggest challenge we have had with estate funds, uh, that uh, estate funds are those funds that are obtained by council after it sells uh, land or, or property, uh, primarily land. Uh, uh, they are required in terms of our enabling act uh, to be ring first and be put in a separate account. W wherein lies the rub or wherein lies the problem? The problem has not been the misuse of those funds or the veramenting of those funds. The problem has been our inflationary environment and the limited <coughs> options that councils have in investing those funds. So once you sell something for, let's say, one billion US dollars, you sell it for one billion US dollars, the money sits in our account and you cannot uh, invest it in interest uh, outside the law or you cannot run around using that money to buy things. So normally it then is hit by inflation and, and, and the roads as it sits in that particular account. I am confident that all the estate funds that ought to be sitting in particular accounts are sitting in those particular accounts and they are eroding because of inflation. One needs a bit of flexibility in the use of those funds to be able maybe to invest in gold coins at the Reserve Bank, buy something as the money comes in so that it is not uh, eroded by inflation. At the end of the day, you just report a, a figure. We have had a situation of our business interests. There was a time uh, uh, in the previous councils where there was uh, a rush to do joint ventures. 
uh, there was a rush to do joint ventures. These joint ventures uh, have uh, legacy issues that are crippling uh, this council. People went into joint ventures over pieces of land, uh, over city lodges, over city uh, meets, over city uh, issues. And these joint ventures have all but collapsed. Some of the investors did not bring the capital that they promised to bring, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, but they were given land where they, wherein they have title deeds, and they are continuing to trade uh, under those joint uh, uh, ventures. We have since uh, been worried about getting into joint ventures uh, with anybody uh, since that time, because uh, council gets the wrong end of the stick. What we have are fully owned companies under council. Uh, fully owned companies under council, which include city parking, which include uh, referral marketing that we are trying to resuscitate. Uh, our success story has been uh, 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 city parking, where the revenue is uh, all of it accounted for and comes to council and has enabled us to buy certain yellow equipment and to do a number of road works. Uh, it could do better, but uh, we are increasing the technology that it is using and a whole lot of remittances are going to come. It has been useful also in the refurbishment of Rufaro Stadium, the car park, and that car park is also going to be another revenue generator. So that has been uh, decidedly a success story. We had a nightmare story with Quarry uh, Private Limited, where we were supposed to carry uh, to do our quarrying uh, for the road and the production of hot asphalt. Uh, that uh, has not worked out successfully. We have merged City Quarry with our other sister companies so that we can uh, uh, reinvest in it, buy a new uh, crusher uh, machine, and buy a new asphalt machine and then improve the roads. So we are dealing with that. Rufaro marketing had all but collapsed. We were receiving uh, zero revenue from an, of, an a contingent of over 130 bars. 130 bars, some of the five, three or so bars were sold by the previous council, but we now are able to account for all the 130 bars. We also had a brewery that is being rented by Delta and uh, we are now able to account for the revenues that are coming from that real estate. Going forward, we are looking at improving uh, the, the real estate that we are managing, the 126 bars, uh, uh, beer halls, and revitalize them and bring them to their uh, glory. The revenue from Rufaro Marketing is the revenue that built uh, Rufaro United. So currently, Rufaro Marketing is assisting in the refurbishment of the stadium, that is the toilets, uh, the public facilities, and the inside of the stadium. Uh, 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 and also, who is going to assist with the acquiring of uh, the bucket seats once we, we have done the, the, uh, 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 the, the whole process. Staffing levels. We have a huge staff con contingent. Uh, our staff contingent is close to 10,000 uh, 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 people. Uh, in many ways, uh, it's a big staff in relation to our city. If we improve the technology and make it a smart city, we could do with less uh, uh, staffing. But at the current moment, even though we say we, 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 we have too many staff, we have shortages in critical areas. Our fire department, uh, uh, our firemen are taken uh, every year going to the Middle East. Our municipal department, uh, not a favorite of many these days, is also understaffed, hence the areas around development control, uh, vendor control, uh, traffic control, even congestions and traffic, li uh, traffic lights cannot be dealt with, issues of drain uh, clearance, and our city has grown uh, uh, disproportionately uh, 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 to its development that we have so many areas that are lacking uh, 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 the waste management department. Uh, you have two workers trying to deal with waste at a shopping complex in Mount Pleasant or in Mavuku or 
uh, and so forth. So the staff, uh, the health personnel, we need 800. We have over 43 polyclinics. We only have uh, 300 or so staff, and uh, the rest we are getting locums. And uh, you know, Harare is the mainstay of the primary health system within Harare, if not the country. We are uh, 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 underpin uh, and guarantee the various immunization programs. We underpin the various uh, antiretroviral programs. We underpin uh, the infectious disease programs, cholera uh, with Wilkins and Beatrice and a number of tents. Uh, that's why we have been able to succeed with the cholera up, uh, outbreak within the city, unlike many other cities in the region. Um, we also, the mainstay of the delivery of, uh, uh, of drugs for non-communicable uh, diseases, uh, the various vaccinations, and any other outbreaks uh, that okay. We are also uh, uh, facilitating the birth of over 2,500 uh, babies every month using our 13 polyclinics, and that number is increasing. To that score, we have set up a theater in Mavuku, uh, the first of its kind, which is operating, uh, doing cesarean uh, operations, and, uh, and, 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 and this, uh, uh, we, we, the last count, we had done over 100. Uh, whereas people used to drive to Parere Nyatkwa or Arare Hospital for such complex uh, procedures. So there is an issue around staffing uh, which will be dealt with, but uh, we will see what happens. Water, sanitation, and hygiene. Uh, the water situation uh, is, is, is a thorn in the flesh uh, uh, for all the cities uh, and in Arare in particular. Uh, as you will recall, the last dam uh, for Harare was built in, the in 1976, which is Lake Manyami. Uh, uh, and we use Lake Manyami, Lake Chivero, and the Prince Edward Waterworks. Since 1976, no new dam has been built for the greater Harare area. And we provide water on a daily basis to Norton, Ruwa, Chitungwiza, Epworth, uh, and the various other new suburbs that are erupting. Chitungwiza has a population close to one million uh, 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 people and has no water source for itself, none. Uh, uh, Rua has, but it can only do limited amounts. Uh, Norton has no water source except us. Epworth has no water source, and then all these other uh, uh, settlements that are erupting in rural district councils, but for all intents and purposes, are in Harare. Uh, the, the water plant, the water treatment plant that we are using was uh, designed by Moton Jeffrey years ago. If you were to wake up, you will be surprised that it is still working. So we need a new plant uh, uh, for the waterworks. Our chemical situation, which is problematic, we are importing almost all a chemicals. Uh, the local suppliers import sulfuric acid, uh, they import bauxite, they imp import uh, uh, lime. Uh, from as far as China, carbon is China. Almost all the chemicals that we use are imported, yet we are billing in RRTGS. We are uh, raking up a, 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 huge, a huge debt with our uh, chemical suppliers. Uh, because of that situation. And when we pay them, the money uh, is not enough. So there's a lot uh, of work that needs to be done, and that infrastructure will need us to work together. We were heartened or happy that they are now, there's now a task force that is assisting us. And, 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 and we are confident that if we put or continue putting our heads together, we will be able to deal with the uh, water uh, situation uh, in, in, in Harare. It's the same with the waste management. Uh, Chenesa Harare uh, that we implemented together with government uh, went a long way to deal with the dump sites. Uh, but what is needed is a sustainable uh, uh, revolving waste management and the redesigning of our waste management processes to be able to deal with the various populations that are increased. We have introduced night shifts 
uh, we need we are grateful we got 52 tractors from government and we are now working on building the trailers so that the tractors can form the base of the collection and the compactors will continue and we'll try to increase them uh, so that uh, we, we are able to be on top of the situation as far as litter is concerned. We are also introducing a raft of measures relating to hygiene laws uh, uh, around the shops, maintenance of bars, maintenance of the fronts of the shops, and implementing the penalties for littering uh, uh, and clearing places like First Street and, and so forth to make sure that they don't uh, remain an ISO. And we are going to announce the more rigorous implementation of the hygiene bylaws, of which we have around 10 of them, if not more. Uh, and um, we, we, we've got uh, those uh, proposals in our, in our budget once we deal with these things. And then the sewer system, we have to increase uh, our, 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 our capacity for the fail works, uh, build new sewer systems uh, uh, around uh, uh, the city. And these uh, systems will then enable us to, 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 to increase the megaliters because our system is a chicken and egg situation because we are doing our, it's, it's based on a recycling. So the more we pollute Ch Lake Chivero, the more money we need to clean the water. So it's very important that we clean the water before we return it back to our water sources. And that's, 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 that's an imperative uh, that we have uh, uh, to do uh, going forward. Um, well, the other thing was that, unfortunately, the, the, the council meetings that uh, uh, have not dealt with uh, uh, what uh, service delivery and issues affecting council. I, I think that those ones we just need to remind each other. Uh, probably the person who drafted the memo to, uh, uh, to, our, to our parent minister was in a rush uh, and, 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 and or maybe the, you know, some of these people, they get newly uh, uh, new jobs and they enjoy putting English words one in front of the other. But uh, you know that we have held uh, more meetings to deal with Chenesa Harare, to deal with the water situation, to deal with the ERP. Most of our meetings that we have held, uh, at, at the very least since I've come back as the mayor of Harare, have had more to do with dealing with uh, issues of service delivery, water, uh, 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 refuse collection, ERP, and we have the minutes of those meetings, and we shall compile the recommendations uh, uh, for the public and for the, uh, for the ministry as to how we have dealt uh, with those uh, matters uh, that require uh, public, um, uh, uh, that uh, deal with service delivery. One of the issues that keeps getting forgotten is the issue of energy. Energy is a serious issue as far as uh, 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 service delivery is concerned. Uh, you must recall that uh, City Council of Ferrari had its own power station which had the capacity of producing 120 megawatts. Sometime in the 1980s uh, uh, an excited ZESA took over uh, the operation of those power stations. Uh, it is no longer producing 120 megawatts uh, last time I checked, it was last year, it, the way the maximum it got to was to 15 megawatts. And uh, this year they have indicated that they are going to abandon uh, the, that power station altogether uh, and try to find investors. Now we use over 34 megawatts for our water treatment. And they took the power station from us and immediately the day after we were being charged uh, uh, energy bills so and we were never given adequate compensation for that power station and therefore now instead of energy being a book entry it became a real cost to us and we we, we keep on paying uh, for some reason Blawayo managed to convince 
the, the, the ZESA for it not to pay. But uh, Sito Ferrari is being asked to pay, and that is crippling uh, energy. And the worst thing that happened was that energy bills used to come with the rates. So people knew the house that had not paid its rates by its electricity being switched off. Now, when they separated the energy from the city councils, that is when the city councils began to fail to collect money because people can live without, with water in my buckets, uh, can forgo to pay for the road, and, 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 but more often than not, people cannot live without electricity. So the moment they delinked uh, energy from the council bill is the moment where councils started struggling. I've had discussions with the ZESA chief executive, the deputy minister of finance over these issues, and they assured us that they are going to, to work on it. And that is what happened with our rates and the energy. Then we have the Zinara issue lastly. The Zinara issue uh, that, that has been coming out. All the money that was given to us uh, last year was accounted for. The 2.5 uh, a, a billion that they'd given us. And to indicate that it has been accounted for, we received another tranche of 7 billion last week. So there's no way they would have, last week but one, so there's no way that uh, they would have paid us had we not accounted for the previous money. Their money had been accounted a long time ago and we were waiting for the other uh, uh, tranche. But then again, we have insisted that the money that is coming from Zinara last year did just barely exceeded two million US dollars. This year, again, they are on track not to give us anything that exceeds two million dollars. We have maintained, and we do maintain, that the number of cars in Harare are close to 800,000. Each car pays 20 US uh, dollars per quarter, and that should produce around 64 million US uh, dollars that goes to Zinara. Then there is fuel levy that is paid. The last audited accounts of Zinara that we saw, the fuel levy amounted to an amount of over 60 million uh, US dollars. That is the 2015 audited accounts. And our proposition is that most of uh, the fuel is consumed in Harare. We have not received a remittance of US dollars from uh, Zinara, yet we know that fuel levy is collected in US dollars. Some of the uh, money for, 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 for licenses are also paid in US dollars, but we never get a remitt remittance in US dollars. And we get a pittance of the money that is annually paid to, to, to Zinara. We simply get two million every year. Shipururu Shemari, Shitoko Toko, Shokuti Kana, Panemunu, Anoziva, Kugadzira Marods, Anozoguti, two million, Aina Kwa Egnoshika, Imaria Kapupika, Samea Wacho, Wearari. Sakatuda Kutvatipo, Maria Katirebe, Eganza Nao, Nevamo Umbarumi, Zinenge Zirikunzok. So we are having this problem of the amount of remittances. The Zinara chairperson promised me a meeting uh, last year where the mayors will meet. Uh, the minister promised a meeting last year. We are still to hold that meeting and we will raise it with our parent ministry that that meeting is urgent so that we should be able to deal with the roads. We appreciate what is happening with the roads uh, in the city, but uh, we also have the roads within the suburbs and, and, and we need to work to deal with those roads. Thank you. Not to, to my knowledge, uh, they haven't. Our position still as re remains as it was. Uh, our council has got existing resolutions that it passed uh, uh, that, uh, well, we, we basically can't, couldn't afford. We understand that uh, 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 the Pomona uh, dump site was declared a national project and that uh, money that is coming or that is being paid there is coming from the fiscus. Uh, and should they put any conditions uh, to approve a budget that will be unfortunate and grossly uh, 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 putting things that don't mix uh, uh, together. And from my understanding and reading of the letter, uh, they are actually complaining about joint ventures that uh, uh, do not give money to council and take money to council. So I'm sure 
uh, there is a common uh, uh, understanding there, but I'm, I'm, I, I stand to be corrected and, and, and guided. I have not held any conversations in regard to that issue, and uh, we have not changed uh, 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 our position. We, we have maintained, uh, as we did in the last meeting, that we want to, 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 to comply with the Auditor General's report and the Parliamentary Committee report to restore the ERP that was there uh, in place at that time, to, 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 to reinstate the ERP uh, that was there uh, as a bridging ERP. And should uh, we then do a new process, we do it in due course and we have an exit uh, process and we have instructed our staff to do so. Should they continue to fail, we are then we have referred the matter to HR because probably maybe the, the, the particular staff involved are completely incapable of doing a simple task that is to get an ERP for us to, to move the budget forward. The deal is still in play. Um, uh, from what I understand, there has been a hiccups in terms of the payment uh, or uh, the accounting of the payment that was done. But uh, how it was supposed to work was that uh, there was an estimated cost and they put the chlorine dioxide generators at, uh, at Moton Jeffrey uh, uh, and then they were supposed to then give uh, the chemicals uh, to then uh, supply water, cleaner water. It's a tried and tested technology that they are using, which is being used in Botswana, South Africa. It will give us more water for the dollar, cleaner water, less smelling water, and, 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 and the, the, the water will go far through our pipes from what uh, the scientists tell us. But unfortunately, at the current moment, their system was supposed to work with us as council pay. But when we pay, uh, you get the forex from the Reserve Bank. There are certain papers and acquittals that ought to be done, and they are still having a, a polemic around those issues. Should it remain that way, then we, we as council will have no choice but to look at whether it is a viable way forward and create new relationships with people who can supply for a longer time in terms of proof of concept. And then once they supply for a longer time, and our stakeholders, the council, parent ministries, and everybody is happy, we then can then engage in paying. A problem with the number of Zimbabwean businesses that are local is that they want cash up front. Uh, and we want to talk to our financiers and everybody that, look, some of these things do three months as proof of concept. Then we know that this thing works. Then we can convince the taxpayers and the ratepayers to invest in your technology. Well, this is a, a part of the, the discussions. What we will do is we will do a data list to our minister. And uh, uh, since he has noted it, we will kindly ask him that when uh, they sit in cabinet, uh, he, uh, they, they are, this uh, is an able minister. He has a... a, a uh, he has a, a private sector background together with the new permanent secretary and uh, we, we were quite excited because they set ambitious targets in their previous ministries which I'm told they met eh? they were winning all sorts of prizes <laughs> last year so I'm sure uh, happier days are coming uh, since they've noted the issues we will use uh, uh, persuasion. You see, they are, our options are very limited when it comes to government. You, we can't take each other to court exactly. There are many things that we rely on them. What we need is to be able to lay our case, push for it vigorously, and then try to get uh, 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 what do they call it? Water out of the proverbial stone. And Moses struck it twice, water came out, and uh, I'm sure uh, is the local government, Moses, we can strike twice or thrice and money will come out. So it's fine. Thank you for coming at short notes. If mm. you want an exclusive with me, it's almost always at Ufaro Stadium. Mm. So you just call yeah. us and we organize. Yeah. Thank you.